Well, I want to speak to you tonight about prayer. Yeah. About prayer. This, I hope tonight is uh, gives you some insight to prayer. Prayer is a critical part of our lives. Prayer. As I thought about this before I get into it, I'm riding down the road today thinking and meditating about this lesson tonight. And I wanted to start with a question is my prayer more about getting God to do something for me? Is my prayer, when I pray, is it more about God doing something for me? Or is my prayer more about me doing what God has already told me to do? And being willing to do it. Prayer. If you think about the venue of prayer. Prayer is. I'll use the word the portal. For getting God's power. Into our lives. Prayer. Bow your head. Let me say a word of prayer to God for us. God, tonight, and I ask you to anoint our hearing. We approach you, God, because we are desperate for you to know your ways. We are desperate to have your spirit flowing and filling our lives. God, we're desperate tonight for your word to be manifest, to be that seed that is sown. So I pray tonight for our hearing, for our comprehension, so that we would listen and we would be more effective than ever as your children, as those who serve you and live for you. In this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. First John chapter 5 says, Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him, who has begotten of him. Let's read that again. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him who is begotten of God. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and we keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Let's read that again. And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Say that with me. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? And this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water, but not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit 
is truth. Holy Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified in his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us. And, and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and life in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. That you may know that you have eternal life. That you may know you have eternal life. And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask him, this is verse 14, anything according to his will, he hears us. Amen. According to his will. He hears us. If he hears us in his will, asking his will, we have then what we ask for. Then I get my prayers answered. How do I pray effectively? Well, I pray effectively when I pray the will of God. There most likely have been times when we have all wondered whether our prayers are going to be answered and how long before I'm going to see my prayer answer. Say amen if you agree with that. Statement. You ever wondered if your prayer was going to be answered? There's no reason for us to lie to one another. We'll learn nothing from that. How many want truth? Amen. Or you just want to keep wandering around in the fog? This came to me because of something Jesus said. In Luke chapter 22, verse 24. New King James says, Now there was also a dispute among them, the disciples, as to which of them should be the greatest. This is, the setting is they're eating the Passover. He's about to leave. Go, he'll be arrested. Listen. There's a dispute among them as to which of them should be the greatest. And he said that kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors, but not so among you. On the contrary, he who is the greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he who governs as he who serves. For who is greater, who is sit that sits at the table, or who that serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as the one who serves. 
But you are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones of judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that you may be sift, that he may sift you as wheat. Verse 32 says, but I have prayed for you. That your faith should not fail. When you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. But he said to him, Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and death. He said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you deny me three times that you know me. So the last Passover, he's about to be arrested. He's only on his way to be crucified. And what's going on? Infighting. I was thinking about this. If the disciples had some struggles and they're living with the Lord. Everybody listen to me just a minute. Don't be shocked if you have a struggle too. Don't, don't give up and quit because life flies up and hits you in the face. Jesus is on his way to the cross and they're fighting. And he says, Peter, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. What's he talking about? He says that he may sift you as wheat. Sifting. Satan wanted to sift Peter, which means that he wishes to shake Peter's faith. So forcefully that he would fall, proving, proving that he was lacking. It's not just Peter. I had read some commentary here that this is written in such a way that it's actually written to include all of the disciples. The, the very word Satan, when we say that, means adversary. It means accuser. It means he's constantly trying to accuse you of what you do wrong. Later, Peter, 1 Peter 5 and 8, he testifies that the devil is like a roaring lion. A, 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 like a lion roaring, looking to devour. Did you know did you know you have an enemy? Say amen if you know you have an enemy. Do you know there's someone, Satan, and he wants to take you down? What is he after? He's after your faith. Now you're not going to hear this preached in most churches, but Satan is after you. And he's after your faith. He's come after Peter. And Jesus knows it. I mean, believe he knows it. And he assures Peter, Peter, I have pleaded in prayer for you. Peter failed the test. But he didn't fail the ultimate test. The prayer that Jesus prayed wasn't answered immediately. But it was answered in the process of time. 
It was ultimately answered. Jesus' prayer did not remove Peter, listen to me, from being tested. But what he did, he told Peter he was going to be tested and he told him he was going to fail the test. But he told him he had prayed for him. Which is something that Peter didn't get at the time and most of us probably are struggling to get it. In a Christian's life, for some reason, maybe because in er errors that we have been taught in, from our preachers and teachers, that for some reason we, are, we tend to think that because we live for the Lord Jesus Christ, we confessed Him as our Savior, we have received the power of His Spirit, baptized in His name, we think for some reason, that we should have no trouble. That we should not, all the tests are over. I'm a Christian, I'm good to go. Acts 14, verse 19. Then some of the Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won over the crowd over. They stoned Paul. They did what? They dragged him outside the city thinking he was dead. But after the disciples gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city the next day. He and Barnabas left for Derby. Now, I thought about this. If this was me, I probably would not have gone back in. Verse 21. They preached the gospel in that city won a large number of disciples. They returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples, encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many, listen to this, this is in quotes, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Now most of us did not sign up for that. What is God doing? <coughs> so Jesus is uh, if we could let's go back to Luke 22 and 32. Put that in the King James Version, please. Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, converted, strengthen your brother. Converted from what? Everybody say, my conversion. Uh, did Peter know the Lord? But he's not been through his conversion. Well, that kind of messes with my theology a little bit, doesn't it? There's got to be a conversion. Conversion from what? Peter, there's going to be a conversion from living in your power to living in my power. What's about to happen just a few days from when Jesus says this to Peter, Jesus is going to be crucified. He's going to, he's going to die on the cross. They're going to take him, bury him in the grave. And three days later, 
He's going to come out of that grave. This impacts Peter. Stay with me. 50 days after the Passover, Peter's in the upper room. Waiting with the 120. The Holy Spirit is poured out. But Peter receives the infilling and the power of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost. And this impacts his life. What's going on? He's being converted. And we think conversion is because we said a little prayer, shook the priest's hand, was good to go. You need to be converted. <clears throat> For living after the mental ascent in your head to living for God with the power of God in your life. Now this guy had been living with the Lord three and a half years, but he still needed to be converted. I, wa I want you to think about what it means to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I want you to, I want you to think about well, what does it mean to live full of the Holy Ghost? Peter, after you receive your conversion. You're going to be operating the power, listen to me, that helps you to overcome where you didn't overcome before. Where you denied me before, Peter, you won't deny me because I'm praying for you and your conversion. Peter goes from denying the Lord to approximately 50 days or 50 to 60 days later, he's standing up preaching about what has happened to Jesus. Look at me. He's not scared anymore. What happened? What happened? It takes a man, some 45 years old, mature, fishing business, He's, the, he's one of the three Jesus takes him in the inner circle. He's the only one of the twelve that, that is noted that he had to pay taxes. What does that mean? He had some kind of substance. Jesus, he's the one that God reveals who Jesus is. And, but in that hour... Jesus is arrested. Peter denies that he even knows the Lord. Goes to standing up on Pentecost. And then all of the apostles died the death of a martyr. Excluding Judas and John. Judas killed himself. John was exiled to the Patmos. When they came to crucify Peter, I want you to get this. Because Jesus prayed for him. You believe Jesus' prayer is effective? He's so effective that when they came to crucify Peter, history says, Peter said, do not, I am not worthy to be crucified as my Lord. Crucify me upside down. This guy goes from one extreme to another. I want to ask you, why? What, what was it? Something happened. It's a conversion. It takes this ordinary, fear-filled man to a place to where he laid his life down. The 
because Jesus prayed for him. The spirit-led life, the spirit-filled life is that place where you live regardless of the trouble. Your faith, your faith, is unshakable. But you'll have to be converted to reach that place. Unshakable faith. But I'm going to tell you that's not easy. Reaching the place of unshakable faith. Now, here Peter is, he's living the life of an overcomer. Now he's operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the word that he has learned for three and a half years, sustains him. Now he lives the life of overcoming. See, usually we don't think about overcoming as much as we think about asking the Lord to remove the thorn. Right. Usually we don't think about overcoming as much as we ask about the Lord about just doing away with the problem. Lord, I'm going to overcome this in your power, in your strength, in what I know about you. Usually we're not, we're not in that. Or usually we are, Lord, remove this from me. I'm talking about prayer. Paul gives us insight to this in 2 Corinthians 12. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, and the Lord said to Paul. Now, now think about this. When someone asks you to pray about something. And you start blabbing things you don't have a right to blab. How many want to know the truth or you want to keep on in the fog you've been in? Listen. So Paul has this thorn in the flesh. He calls it a messenger of Satan. That's quite a deal, isn't it? You ever had a messenger of Satan? I'm not talking about your ex-wife. <laughs> Hopefully. He refers to it as a messenger of Satan buffeting him. And he said, I pleaded with the Lord. This is Paul. This is not Steve. And he said, Lord, take this thing from me. And the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect. In weakness, therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmity that the power of God may rest on me. That just doesn't add up. You say, Lord, move this. And the Lord says, but I want you strong. Do you, do you know as the story goes, you get over to 2 Timothy, they behead this man. He, he's not playing games. He's not playing charades. He's not just, you know, a member of a church somewhere professing they're a Christian. They're going to behead him. Now, 
I read in one place when they took him to the shop and block, he, he ran to kneel down. I hate problems. Come on. Anybody in here ever had a problem? Maybe you have a problem tonight. Let me see your hands if you ever had a problem. I don't like problems. I would like it if I never had another problem. I'd like it if I was healthy till 100 and laid down one night and went to sleep and never woke up. But usually that's not how it works. Everybody that it wonders if you'll make it to 100, say amen. amen. <laughs> you can ask for this to be removed. You believe Paul was effective in his prayer life? And the Lord said no. No. My strength is made perfect when you're weak. This just doesn't line up with my prayer thinking. I like smooth sailing. I don't even like fishing in the wind. I only like fishing when the, right before the sun sets and the water's real smooth. That's the only time I really want to go fishing because I don't want to get up early to go because it ain't worth it. Anybody in here like smooth sailing? Anybody here want to live for God? Amen. Amen. Well, you're in the wrong place if you're looking for smooth sailing. Amen. He didn't promise smooth sailing. But he did promise you if you would trust him that he'd never leave you. Jesus was confident that Peter was going to get back up again. He was so confident, he said, when you're converted, strengthen your brother. See, but now, now look, Peter didn't get this the first time Jesus said it to him. You ever been sitting in church and you're like, I wonder what he's talking about? Well, don't worry. You're, you're just like Peter. We're just like Peter. We, we don't get it the first time. But you know when that cock, when that rooster started crowing? He got it. He got it when he heard the rooster start crowing. So why does the Lord allow us to go through things? suffer experiences, to be tested. I believe it's not only for us, but it's also to help others grow in that place to where their faith becomes unshakable. Don't say anything out loud to answer this question, John. Stay quiet. <laughs> what would it take for you to walk away from the Lord? Just think about it. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians one, verse six. You know, in one place, it was John six. 
Jesus said, except you eat my flesh and you drink my blood, you have no life in you. And many turned. It shook their faith. So they walked with him no more. How can this man give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink? Jesus turns to his disciples and says, will you go away also? And Peter said, where are we going? Hmm? Thou hast the words to eternal life. Second Corinthians 1 and 6. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and your salvation. The New Living Translation says, For when we ourselves are comforted, we certainly, we will certainly comfort you, then you can patiently endure in the thing, same things we saw. Look, if you go through it, if you go through it, and I watch you go through it, that, gives, that builds my faith. That if I ever go through something like you went through, I can survive it too. Amen. Come on, anybody ever been at the bottom? Anybody in here? Raise your hand if you've ever been at the bottom. You ever been at the bottom? But you hooked up with somebody who kept telling you, you can make it, man. You can do this. Look, if you just get converted, if you just get full of the Holy Ghost, well, what does that mean? If you just seek after Him, yeah. night and day, day and night, you'll read His Word. And you allow him to convert you like he converted me. There will nothing shake your faith. Wow. You know what Paul's saying here? He's saying, what I hear him saying is, if I can make it, you can make it. If I can make it, you can make it. Peter's so far down after Jesus has been crucified. He's so demoralized. He separated himself from the other disciples. Mark 16. Five. They go to the tomb, saw a young man clothed in long white robes sitting to the side. They're afraid. And he said, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. See where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter. That he is going before you in Galilee. There you will see him. And he said, as he said to you. So after all of this, back to prayer. Back to Jesus praying. It may not work out in the moment that you think it's going to work out. It can happen in the moment. Look at your I wonder what God's doing. You ever tried to get in front of what God was trying to do? Because you didn't have the conversion. You didn't have the faith that you need to learn. Why doesn't it happen now? You ever wondered that, Jenny? You ever wondered why don't it happen today? I prayed. I've been faithful. Don't lose it. My mom had a daughter right here. Now listen to me. You remember that little Pentecostal church in Jacksonville at the railroad tracks? You remember that? Before I was born, my mom and daddy was in a service there and she had a daughter the size of a lemon in her throat. And a man named Brother Cecil Shepherd 
who had a cancer on his eye. Now you try to figure this out. Looked like a grapefruit. When I was a kid, I'd see him, he'd scare me to death. Because of, you remember Janet? The grossness of that cancer on his face. But this precious man who was battling a cancer on his face prayed for my mother and immediately that daughter disappeared. Now, in my little mind, I wonder why does this man with a cancer on his face have to live with that and pray for a woman with a daughter and it disappeared? See, we don't have all of those answers. You don't, you and I don't know the answer to that. But we do know this. God can miraculously heal you. Or he can heal you in the process of time. Now, I'm not God, y'all. That's all apparent to everybody, I'm sure. <laughs> I've watched a lot of people confess Christ with no conversion. And I've watched them struggle in their faith. The Lord knows who's saved in this building and who's not. Doesn't he? And the Lord knows who's converted and who's not. And I'm going to tell you, the devil's after all of us. We're going to hang our hat on this. He prayed for us. Amen. He looked from the cross and he says, Father, forgive them. Look at your neighbor and say, you ever been to a place and you didn't realize what you was doing? <laughs> Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. This, this is big. This is powerful. We serve a God tonight that can change a heart. He can take an old, hard-hearted, mean, brutal. Anybody ever known somebody like this? Didn't want anything to do with God. Made fun of Christians. Yeah, who are you talking about? Paul. Much of the time, answered prayers are through the process and time because hearts and minds will have to be changed. Sometimes that takes years. Well, how long did it take you to get where you are? Huh? You, you get there yesterday? Huh? I didn't get here in a few days. It, it took me years, Charles, to get where I am. And I'm still not there. We want it to take minutes. You know they bring a, a boy to the disciples and they say he's got a devil. I was riding down the road and somebody called me today and just started t talking to me about this. This boy had a devil. They took it to the disciples. Said, he's got a devil. Cast this devil out of him. They couldn't do it. So they take him to Jesus and Jesus gets upset over it. He says, how long? You ever looked at somebody and said, when are you going to ever learn? I've looked at a few people. They're not here anymore.
They shook out. He says, how long? Do you, do you not realize this kind, listen to me, this kind of power comes with fasting and prayer. What's that about? It's about being converted. It's about the conversion. From the old man to the new man. Everything is more important than God. It's got to be a conversion. I would love to see a revival. There's going to have to be a conversion. First, the church is going to have to be converted. From this looseness it lives in. All right. All right. You walk in churches and it looks like it don't look like church no more. Come on. It looks like the world is running the church. All right. This ain't my notes. I gotta get back to my notes. <laughs> so what is this prayer all about? That Jesus is praying. He's praying for Peter's faith not to be shaken. If Satan can't get at you through the meanest man you know, he'll come at you through somebody in your family. Amen. If he can't get at you that obvious, anybody know that person in town that's the meanest person in town? You know, like, what's his name? Bad, bad Leroy Brown. <laughs> if he can't get you through Leroy Brown, I hope there's not a Leroy Brown in this county. <laughs> He'll come at you through somebody that you would never think. That's true. Listen. Your faith. Faith needs to be unshakable. I, I listen to my dad and I. I listen to this. Tom has a CD in old Brownie, his own truck we own. And he keeps his CD in there. I think it's on the CD. And in that CD, my dad gets so beside himself that he says something. And I think, why do you have to say it so boastfully, blatantly? And he said, if my wife doesn't make it, I want to make it. Why do you have it? If my kids don't make it, I want to make it. I think, why is he, why would you say that? He's trying to give us a message. You've got to get a place of conversion to where your faith cannot be shaken. Right. 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 Even when that trouble comes, it's beyond what you can even imagine. Right. And you're begging the Lord to remove it. And the Lord says, no, it makes you strong. Oh, I'm over time. I'm sorry. Matthew, no, I'm not. Matthew 26, 36. Jesus came to them to a place called Gethsemane. It's the place of crushing where the olives are crushed. And he says, sit here while I go pray over there. He took with him Peter. The two sons of Zebedee began to be sorrowful. He's deeply distressed. He said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further. He fell on his face and he prayed, oh, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, nevertheless. You see, he knew the end from the beginning. Not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to his disciples. He fell them sleeping and he said to Peter, what could you not watch with me one hour watching pray? This is a guy that stayed up and fished all night but couldn't pray one hour. Why? He hadn't been converted. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Second time he went away and prayed, My father, this cup 
if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. He came in, he found them asleep again. Their eyes were heavy. He left them. He went away. He prayed the third time. And he said these words. And he came to his disciples and said, Are you still sleeping? And resting, behold, the hours of the hand of the Son of Man betrayed. The hands of sinners rise and let's be going. Revelation 1 17. This will be my last scripture. Jesus' prayer was answered. In Revelation 1 and 18. Let me read 17. John said, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I'm the first and the last. Verse 18. His prayer is answered. I am he that liveth, was dead. Behold, I'm alive forevermore. I have the keys to hell and death. Wow. Wow. So this message is tonight. Prayer works. And your prayer, your prayer needs to be one of faith. Stand with me, please. Unshakable faith. Let's pray for ourselves tonight. Father, we come to you tonight. We, God, I stand here before these precious people. I pray that we all bow our head tonight and we cry out to you, oh God, help me, convert me, fill me. God, give me a hunger, help me to hunger for your word. To walk a path that's straight. Not to look to the right or to the left, but to look straight on. Forgive me when I fall. Thank you for your amazing grace. God, may I be mindful tonight of how you work. I trust you in how you work. I, I, I would break it if I tried to fix it myself. But I, I see where I need to trust you. So that you work it out. So I wait on you tonight. Trust you in Jesus name. Amen.